to let go. And ladies, I have found my fashion statement. <laughs> really does fit off. One size fits all. It's so comfortable. I may never wear anything else. You're going to get sick of seeing me in this. But comfort, comfort. I, we had a wonderful time and really felt that aloha spirit. So today I am going to talk about the aloha spirit. You don't have to go to Maui to get the aloha spirit. It's everywhere and it's very much in harmony with our uni unity beliefs. Maui is this island of contrast. It's this tropical paradise. It literally is a paradise. And then you've got thousands of tourists <laughs> taking over this tropical paradise island. So you have that contrast of that nurturing, gentle, mystical en energy with thousands of tourists. But we, we can tap into that at any time. So the first thing I have to do is dispel some common myths about going to Hawaii, okay? They weren't told to me before I left. We were there for six days, and never once did I hear Elvis singing Blue Hawaii. I kept listening, it never happened. I tried to get Michael to sing the Hawaiian wedding song to me, but he can drum it, he can't sing it. You know? We did see an Elvis impersonator walk through the door when we were leaving the building, so maybe Elvis really hasn't left the building, I don't know. <laughs> Disclaimer number one, there was no Blue Hawaii music in the background. Disclaimer number two, when I grew up, every time we saw a movie or people going to Hawaii, as they got off the plane, they were met by beautiful Hawaiian women with flowery lace over their shoulders, <laughs> welcoming them to the island didn't happen. We got off that plane, we were looking all around, here we are, you know, no Hawaiian women in grass skirts giving us that. With the price of flowers, I think I understand why. Uh, we did go to the car rental and I saw a guy walking in with a lay and I said, where did you get it? He said, I paid extra. <laughs> so most of the lays there are silk, which is really a good idea because then they last forever. And I finally have a costume to wear to one of Valerie's costume parties, so very excited about that. Okay, disclaimer number three, we're used to dry dry air here, aren't we? In the tropics, it's humid there, people. And there's a lot of wind. I couldn't believe we got off the plane and the wind practically blew us away coming off the ocean. So you won't see any pictures of me in Maui because all the pictures, my hair is going like that. <laughs> And whether that's vanity or self-respect, I haven't decided yet, but it doesn't matter. Okay, now that we've got the disclaimers out of the way, let's go to the good stuff. Again, you don't have to go to Maui to open to and receive that beautiful aloha spirit. It's so simple. Very in harmony with what we teach in unity. You see God in everything. You bless everything. And you extend love and kindness constantly. You can do that anywhere, can't you? The Aloha Spirit. And you can hear that spirit in the very language they speak. It took us a while to pick up the street signs because the words are very long and they, they seem very complicated until you get used to it, that all the words end in a vowel. And if you get the right first letter and stick a vowel on the end, at least you're close, you know, instead of to hear that. But I love that when the words end in a vowel because, you know, in the Old Testament, those vowel sounds were the breath of God. And every word they speak has the breath of God in it. Look in your Old Testament. Jehovah, Yahweh, Adonai, El Shaddai, all end in that vowel sound, the breath of God, all over the island being spoken, along with thousands of tourists. Did I tell you about the thousands of tourists? Aloha. That word in itself is so beautiful, you hear it over and over again. And it has four meanings. Hello, goodbye, and love. Love is being extended through that divine breath of God that comes through aloha. Hello, goodbye, I'm extending the divine breath of God every time I say that. Isn't that beautiful? That's just that one word. If you take hello, sharing in the present means hello. Joyful means oha, and life energy is ha. 
Serge King in his wonderful little book. I picked this little booklet up. Remember I said this would have been on my bucket list all my life. When I first started going to Unity Village, gosh, it was almost 25 years ago, longer than that, I, I didn't have much money, so I got this, I was cheap, I guess, I got this little <laughs> tiny booklet called The Aloha Spirit by Serge King. And I've kept it with me all these years. And, you know, he talks about the, the aloha means the joyful sharing of that divine life energy in the present. So every time you say aloha, you're sharing that energy of a divine life force. He also said, the aloha blessing is the key to health, to happiness, prosperity, success. It's the key to everything. And the aloha blessing is simply blessing everything and everyone that represents that which you desire. So you bless everything good because that's what you desire. And if someone else is blessed, you see someone else, oh, how wonderful, they get to do this, or they've received this. You bless them, because in blessing them, you're bringing it to you as well. The aloha blessing, constantly sharing divine love. And there are three reasons, Serge King talks about, why this works. It's scientific. It's, you know, the, the mental science. Now, here's why it works. First of all, we know in unity, whatever you focus on increases, right? So do you focus on the blessings, or do you focus on what he calls the curses? Now, he, when he says the word curse, he doesn't mean cursing like we do in this country when you're, you know, swearing. He's talking cursing as anytime you criticize, anytime you blame someone, anytime you get into fear and worry, he calls that cursing. And he said cursing actually cancels out or diffuses the blessing. So every day, you know, the Old Testament says, choose this day who you will serve. Are you going to focus on the blessings or the curses? It's our choice. Divine love or negativity in every moment. That's the first reason why it works. The second reason is the law of giving and receiving. We have that in unity, don't we? The more you desire in your life, the more give it. Give it out and more will come to you. You know, most people, when they want more abundance, Tighten up, pull that grip, and that actually shuts the flow. Share and give, and more will be open and given unto you. That's what Jesus said, give it, you shall be given. All right? Now, the third reason why it works is when you bless others, it's bypassing your own fears. If they're having a blessing that you don't have, it's probably because you have some fear or belief that's blocking it. So when you bless others, it bypasses that fear. And in blessing others, you're blessed as well. Those are the three reasons he gives for why the Aloha blessing works, if you need that scientific blessing. I, reason, I say just fake it till you make it, try it till you see it working, and keep on going with it, all right? Now, the Aloha spirit, as you can tell, is all about gratitude and blessing. It gives out good energy and receiving it back. And the word for thank you that we heard over and over again is mahalo. Mahalo. Let's all say that together. Mahalo. Again, the vowel sound. Mahalo. All the divine energy coming out of one word. The aloha spirit is grateful when they bless everything. They give out gratitude, receive it back. Malejo. Malejo. Always in gratitude. Well, I believe in blessings, so before I go on any trip, especially this one, because it was a lifetime in the making, I always ask my angels, because I believe in angels, however you see them, and I said, angels, help me have a blessed trip. I called forth the angels of grace, that we would have a blessed trip. You know, nothing going wrong, everything unfolding in a grace-filled way. And sure enough, I knew the angels were with me the very first day we were there. When we checked in the night before, and we arrived very tired because we'd been on the plane for a long time, and it was a bit of a drive to our hotel, they gave us a voucher for an orientation in the morning, an orientation of the island and, and whatnot. And we were a little leery because Michael was saying it's probably just a timeshare thing. <laughs> you know, you get talked into those things. So we almost didn't go, but I thought, gee, I really want to know what's going on in the island because 
there were so many things to do and we didn't know quite what to do first. So we went ahead and took our chance and went to the orientation. And sure enough, that's all it was, was an orientation. And um, so they told us all about all the things there were to do there. And the concierge that was doing it said, I have free tickets to give. We're going to have a drawing for three or four free tickets. And one of them happened to be uh, tickets to the theater, because I had been told by a close friend, you have to go to the theater on Maui. It's a live theater production of the history of Hawaii and how it came about. And so she was telling that she was going to have this drawing. And I said to my angels, I said, angels, I want that ticket. <laughs> And do you know what? When she drew the numbers, because we all had a little ticket, mine was the first number, and I thought, man, my angels are with me. I got to pick, and I got those theater tickets. So call on your angels. They will give you those blessings. So we went to this wonderful, wonderful musical. It, it, it was called, and I forgive me if I'm pronouncing these wrong, Yulalena. And that... The title means a special wind and rain that happens at twilight, only in Maui. And they call it a cleansing rain. They even call it a red rain. And the whole, the whole play was the history of the islands, and there's such primal energy. The dancing and the music and the drumming, it's so primal. We just, I just really felt it. And there was even a part where they showed the volcano erupting, and they took this red gauzy cloth and on each side they drew it over the audience so it was like the volcano was coming over us. It was absolutely amazing. But uh, th they said it about it, this Yulalena. Uh, Whispers of other places and other times, both mythical and real. It blows between daylight and night, between times and worlds. It is both hopeful and cleansing. Yulalena. That cleansing rain. Of course, metaphysically, we would say that is happening in our consciousness as we release and let go of the thoughts that have held us back, the belief systems that have held us back, and open to that flow of creation, transformation, rebirth, surrendering and letting go and allowing that rebirth. For those of you who came to Michael's meditation, we came back Wednesday night and uh, uh, the energy, you know, all that Aloha spirit energy came through in meditation. It was pretty powerful. Well, the island is ancient, it's beautiful, it's mystical, and you can feel when you look at the hills and the mountains, you, you feel that they look alive. You know, it looks like the mountain's going to get up and walk. You know, you can just feel the aliveness of the island. And some people believe it's the ancient land of Lemuria, which is similar to Atlantis, only much friendlier. <laughs> and so you can feel all that primal energy there. But getting back to the Aloha spirit, I relate it to in unity, we say there is only one presence, one power. And you really feel it there, especially in the rainforest with all the plants and, you know, growing together. <coughs> And there's this friendly acceptance of all people because of that one presence, one power. And the reason they have such friendly acceptance of all people is Maui and Hawaii are very multicultural. And when the plantations started to grow, you know, pineapple and coffee and all the different things they grow there, people came from all over the world as immigrants to work on the plantations. Polynesian, Japanese, Portuguese, I wasn't aware of the Portuguese influence. As a matter of fact, uh, as a sideline trivia, I love trivia, uh, you've all associate probably the ukulele with Hawaii because of the different people we've seen play it there. But the ukulele actually came from the Portuguese. So that's the in the for what it's worth department today. <laughs> Michael's favorite uh, thing we learned there, because uh, Michael feels so passionately about raising your children lovingly, and uh, the way they treat their children there. They watch them when they're growing up. And they, they call out their potential. That's what they get, calling out their potential. When they see the potential of each child, and each one would be different, they nurture and honor those individual gifts and call those gifts out. 
And they're, of course, especially looking for the wisdom keepers, the kahunas, the ones who will share the ancient wisdom of the island. The aloha spirit, which is so nurturing, so gentle, so gracious. They say, walk gently on the earth, walk gently on the earth. In the flow of spirit, not rush. Took me about four days to slow down. By then we were getting ready to turn around and come back. And I, you know, I see, gonna see how long that lasts, how long I can keep that gentle in the flow. Well, the Maui people say graciousness cannot be taught. It is the purest expression of the human spirit infused with natural kindness. Kindness is natural. And an effortless warmth, effortless warmth, you may never have experienced before. And we can do that right here in Green Valley with the Aloha spirit, generous and giving. That's why they honor their guests with the Luau Feast. They call the Luau Feast the way of abundance because they know that in sharing of their abundance, they receive it as well. As you bless others, you are blessed. My new favorite word is my ai. means come and eat. <laughs> <laughs> and it not only means we'll share it, but we'll share the best of what we have. We won't just share in these luaus. We will share the best of what we have. Entertainment, food, music, dancing. We will share the best. That's unity's principle of abundance, isn't it? You want abundance in your life? Start sharing, start giving. The law of giving and receiving goes in and out, in and out. Sergio King, in this little booklet I've had since forever, has a meditation you can do, you know, from the crown of your head to your navel. And he said, when you're meditating, breathe in through the crown of your head, breathe out through your navel, take it in, Give it out. Take it in. Give it out. And that's the Aloha spirit. Receive the blessings from the universe and then give them out. You can't clog up the flow by stopping the flow. You're constantly giving, constantly filling. Isn't that beautiful? The Aloha spirit. Well, I think the Aloha spirit is needed in the world today, don't you? I think it's needed to constantly be giving love constantly sharing kindness, gratitude and graciousness, acceptance of others, acceptance of all people with a natural warmth, giving and sharing in the flow, opening to receive the aloha blessings. Let us pray. Let us take that into prayer. Oh, we choose this day that aloha spirit of love and compassion and kindness and graciousness. We choose to bring it in and allow it to flow out, always saying yes to the universe. I take it in, I give it out, I share it. I live in that graceful flow of the universe, always providing, always enough, always sharing. And I say thank you, Father, Mother, God, for your presence, your power, your grace, in the nature of the Christ, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing Breathe Through.